Hi folks, we are back with the battle for the Seven Kingdoms. It's round two and the first game to be played between uh, the High Gardeners and the Proudwing Kings is uh, this one, uh, Banner of the Lion for Tyrell. It's going to be played by Robert Charvet against uh, the other deck is uh, Brotherhood Without Banners for the Proudwing Kings. Uh, going to be played by Sarah. And uh, let's see the matchup. So, Sarah. Were you optimistic ahead of this one? Uh, it was not the best matchup we could have gotten, but not the worst either. I think Elaine's was the worst against Brotherhood. Um, her snow was pretty harsh, but this one was playable. Um, I think there was a few very tricky stuff. Um, Red Keep was annoying, uh, definitely when there was a lot of Econ from the start and um, if there was uh, early pressure with Vanquish the Unbelievers, I think the game started to turn around and kind of lost in the late game. But sometimes I could play Brotherhood very rushy and win before, um, before things started to turn for Lion. Yeah, I played uh, the Lion deck in testing and uh... In my experience, so whenever the early Vanquish worked, right, and whenever there was Econ to then support all the removal, because you have the usual, right, you have Robert Strong, you have House Blonde Knights, you have Mandon if the hand is empty, and it's a lot of pressure, but uh, sometimes if the Econ isn't there, you can do one effect and then that's your whole round, and sometimes there's so much claim soak that there is not a good opportunity to play Vanquish, and then, of course, uh, there's plenty of uh, claim soak and... Uh, the Harris is happening anyway, and you don't need a thousand characters. And uh, basically, the the Tyrell Lion effort to remove uh, the board fizzles. And I've never played turny really. So uh, one of the plans is get a good board, spam the board, basically get Boros triggers, uh, bring a bunch of knights in, maybe with Osmond as well to get the chain, and then you have. Uh, 10 of them and you win with Turney. That's never happened. I played, uh, I know you played this deck in the past and uh, got good Turney wins always against me. I think you won something like 10 games in a row with this mm -hmm. deck and always on the Turney round you it managed to close. It was a bit of a different deck, I think. You have one question, stuff like that. Political Disaster does nothing. No Murgulis uh, in this one either. And Initiative is uh, okay, but uh, Brotherhood specializes in high initiative. Yeah, I so. think the worst was that. Um, in my deck, I also play First March and I also play Battle of the Camps. But in this deck, uh, um, there was so much military icons. Uh, it never worked out. The, the plots never worked out. And then I also have um, the Palace of Sorrows, mm -hmm. which is very scary against this deck that plays High Tower. Um, not High Tower, no, it's the House Florent Knights. House Florent Knights, yes. And, um, I was hoping to avoid playing this one unless really necessary. Yeah, and the Baratheon deck has a quite a straightforward game plan. So, place the Maiden, then all high initiative to go first. You have um, a Zoro High Reborn on a character that potentially has Intimidate. Now, if that's uh, Tormund, he has printed Intimidate. There's also a chance to use the agenda to give Intimidate or to give Insight to always have answers, to give... Uh, Renown or Stealth as well, you can get that through Unbridled Generosity uh, on Shagwell as a former champions to do that, so works pretty nicely. Yeah, and I decided to play the Fools because I was thinking of what to do for um, Econ, so I, and I decided to go with the Iron Bank, and then uh, the Fools also work well with Bestow stuff, and I can play Unbridled and have um, a good spread of keywords and with Baratheon you have Petrus as well, it's very good. Have, if you have with Chagwell you have Tricon and that's all the keywords for free. Yeah, so um, pretty straightforward, uh, not a lot of... I guess I, I wanted you to play King in the North in this one, but you said there's too many triggers. I guess there are some triggers, yeah, but it's, uh, there's not a lot yeah, of... Yeah, there's um, a bunch of them, there's... Um, Back in Brothers, I think goes to High Heart. You have um, you have uh, Valamir six skins and Tormund, and none of that works. Uh, and Melisandre doesn't work. 
Also, I think this was a bad matchup for Lady Stoneheart, but in some in certain matchups, Lady Stoneheart is also very strong. Yeah, but uh, so basically, it's um, the decision is which keyword to give, whether you need insight or whether you can dominate the entire phase with intimidate, and then you just sequence your challenges in a way to get maximum advantage. You usually go first and less yeah, in the I early game. Yeah, with this with this deck, uh, it doesn't play that much on the board, so. You sometimes do want to go second, you just wait to see what um, Perry Lion plays and then uh, gain insight. That's also pretty good. Okay, so with all of that said, we can show you how the game went. Here we are. Yeah, waiting for recording. Yeah, so um, at the beginning, um, I wasn't very happy with my opening hand. On the first one I didn't have any icons, so I did Mulligan, I got one King's Road, which was not the best, because um, if there is Red Keep, uh, King's Roads can be cancelled. Uh, and also, in hand, I think I only had like the small characters, like the two Costas and stuff, which is kind of dangerous with House Floor and Knights. Um, and also, you're really looking to get maybe like... Tormund uh, um, uh, or something like that. Although Varamir also was a bit problematic in this matchup if there was Red Keep. Is, yeah. uh, we can see here that Robert sets up two cards in Shadows. We should really report this. This is um, yeah. not supposed to see. Well, I guess uh, I, as the spectator, when I was recording, I can see, but the players no, can I see was, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, not the really thing much, right? So he does get the red keep in setup, dupes it as well, he plays political disaster. Yeah. Two cards in shadows. Um, now if you play your maiden and go first, you can use the king's road, right, to get past the red keep. Yeah, but with no board and um, no power on the faction, I think there's very few benefits to going first. So I, I, I wanted him to go and also I didn't have that many, um, I think... Actually, here I didn't have any three cost characters even uh, or five cost. I had all two costers, if I remember correctly. So I don't think I would have used it anyway. Yeah, and with late summer piece, that's the only econ plot. So if you don't set, uh, if you don't play the arbor here or redline straights, kind of struggle then for the rest of the game in this deck. And he plays the high tower, which can be a source of the econ. In this deck, though. Okay, there's some uh, shadows and ambush, but it's a um, lot of it is, it is not um, it's uh, non terra so it wouldn't trigger high tower. And high tower knights can come into play in in a phase other than marshalling, but also not that uh, great. But he does play two very strong military icons yeah. and keeps that gold to cancel their king's road. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if I don't use it, then he play. Play borders or something like that, right? Well, three cards in shadows, three left in hand, and if he does challenges against you, that's late summer feast as well. Yeah, it's just not too bad, and um, going second, you can always take inside, so. Shagwell, does he get bestowed? I don't know, I think... Um, he doesn't. I immediately didn't bestow him, I was thinking what I should I marshal. Um, yeah, it was not a super um, typical game for Bellahood because I had so many... Um, I think I had this patch race which was one off and then some other cards that I found. I think I had Lady Stone had in hand. That was the only big character that was really not worth playing here. And you take insight in the early game as a rule, especially going uh, going second here when you can't really intimidate. Now the question is, if you tax military, what do you do? He has ten. And you have 13 on defense. Because uh, not 
suffering losses on the board can be pretty important here this vanquish possibly to come as well and if you can just keep everyone in play and, and these survive the heresy really nicely it's not like it's uh Mesa mm -hmm. and Dormund in play at the same time then uh, he could be in trouble right but he has to make the call first of all what to do there's no penalty on the military challenge no put to the sword or anything like that uh, there's pinch which works on the other two And here either you oppose correctly with everyone to win or you leave it yeah, right I so that he has power. Him, so he has power, but I actually I could have defended with um, this uh, infiltrator and then um, and then I could defend uh, I could leave the intrigue unopposed but of course he could choose not to do intrigue. So, uh, yeah I wasn't going to Defend with everybody. I was just thinking if I should leave it on opposed to get power on the second. <laughs> because I think it works out a bit better on the defense side. Right? Um, on the attack queen, if you win on the air attack queen. And I did as well had um, Unbridled Generosity in hand to get Shag with the keywords and such base. Well, that's the boss. Now he can find the House Lord and Knight to discard your Infiltrator and then you kill the second one and you're down to three. Mm, yeah. I think that's probably what he was trying to do because Green Apple Knight now attacking on the Intrigue when you have... Um, and he has Light Summer Fist anyway is not um, great. Although he does get the trigger, he does, does get the High Tower. Yeah. And there is some threat of a pinch, right? If he attacks with both. I need to still kind of take care. I think this was actually what happened here, right? He attacks with two, and then uh, there's the question does he have unexpected guile, which would give him seven on the attack? Uh, yeah, that would be pretty <laughs> harsh. Unexpected guile and finish would ruin the game here a little bit. Yeah, but that's a. Uh, a very specific combination of cards. Yeah, I think both of them are one copy. So here I was thinking if I should leave that one on the post as well, or um, defend just so I don't get things. You know, the king's road. It was okay with. Yeah, and you're about to get a bunch of insects as well here. Yeah, I think um, we have timer here, but the game is not supposed to be timed, right? Uh, that's a bit of a mistake. Uh, because then. Um, We did both uh, take our time with thinking through everything, so uh, I do prefer that it's not time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he kills the one that would have gone yeah. with Boros, makes sense, but that leaves the board exposed to two unopposed challenges. He has uh, more stuff in shadows. And here we go, that's the Umbrella. It can be cancelled in his particular deck, he does not play Hand's Judgment. Mm -hmm. And now, so it has to go on Shagwell and Patchface gets it anyway, so the question is yeah, what do you do so, with the other two? Yeah, I was thinking if there's a penalty for putting gold on his characters, if there's something that can interact, but I don't think there is. Um, I mean, obviously there is uh, Osmond Fetterberg and... Um, yeah, I wouldn't put it on him. Ed Munkoy, yeah, so, but I don't think there's anything that would move gold. Or, yeah. So that and means now that he his former champion also is a source yeah. of renown if, in case something happens to yours. And also in a round, he gets stealth as well eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And there's Serena now, now on patch face <laughs> and inside and Shiva. So immediately the power is six, so he's immediately on the back foot. He has to stop you. And you get all the cards. Okay, you don't have a, an iron bank now to support all of your mm -hmm. uh, cards on hand, but you do have choices, and it's unlikely that he's going to murder everything now with your nine cards. But uh, reserve needs to be uh, yeah. <laughs> decided now. And in round one, we saw actually Robert Charvat thinking about <laughs> which cards to, re uh, to lose to reserve for about 10 minutes. The opponent thought he, was, uh, he lost connection. But yeah, but I, I also had to think of it because there was um, a lot of... I think I had uh, Varamir 6 skins, which is questionable if he is useful or not with the red king. But, um, you do have to spend red keep on him, and then I had Old Bill Bone, which is good um, in this matchup because it cancels, I mean, cancels prevents the Iron Bank, and um, the Iron Bank inherits you, and it's a clever thing. But it's also a bit expensive. Uh, and, uh, I think I had a dupe for Shagler, which there is no more bullies, but there is um, Robert Strong and Forced March, which is somewhat scary as well. Yeah. So good options. And I had two copies of Azora Hyrule Bone, which is I think the one that I decided to discard. Yeah, so uh, it's always a bit risky because you lose one and then. I remember actually these these choices. So I was uh, I was sitting uh, in such a way that I couldn't see your hand. I couldn't see what you had and what you were looking at. But you narrated loudly, and I just thought, okay, these are all good options. So you're doing fine, whatever you decide. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so Robert Charvat was in my uh, team for the 8th Regents tournament in, in Team Tyra. He was a, g a great teammate, uh, but uh, for some reason, when he played the uh, Tyrell line, he played it twice and it's a really strong deck. He just got the worst luck. I remember one of the games, uh, he just had no econ all game and um, lost both. So I was thinking, maybe, maybe his bad luck continues in this one. Yeah. And yeah, so far he doesn't have the Econ to support all of his tricks, so... Okay, not too bad. I had to get a bit of milk as well, because there is nothing that... worth making on the board currently, but of course there is stuff, right? If there's, um, if there's uh, another one of these Green Apple Knights, the prime candidates. So here comes the Vanquish, that's the only chance to really reduce your board significantly and then if you combine with Robert Strong and stuff like that. But uh, if Robert Strong is the card in Shadows, then supporting the fight messes up that plan here. He would need the Iron Bank to have its due. Mm -hmm. That's the one round where he does uh, take initiative, usually, unless you play one of your high ones. And, uh, well, yes. if you get enough Claim Soak, I think you should decide for this one as well. I think he might play Counting Copper, which is not the option, or the optimal one to play um, for supporting the fight. But I don't think he had the Econ for that, I guess. Yeah, he spent one bounty. We have not seen the Arbor or Raven Straits yet. He has the strength, so he can marshal some more military pressure. Yeah, and this was not the best one here because I had already had problem deciding for a reserve which to discard and now again I had to probably choose to discard something because the board was not that strong. And here I did I think end up discarding old beer bone because this is just no realistic way to get him out yeah. to near his faction card before he can play. This is the round, right? Where he, he can give you uh, safety. There's no yeah. theoretical way to gain gold. Oh, and actually there is. You can play uh, High Tower Knight from hand to trigger yeah. uh, High Tower, but that's just one gold. It's not going to bring uh, Robin Strong out of shadows. But because now he can... If he plays... Um, the Iron Bank helps you on Mandon, that's immediately 4 gold to work with, and then you can have uh, problems, I guess. 
had I think in testing when this was revealed, I had it every time. <laughs> but yeah, he's not um, it's not going to draw everything because he is simply not drawing in this game at the moment very much. Doesn't have a high power trigger even here. Had one last round. That's his only draw so far. Yeah, yeah so I former champion as well. Get rid of another former champion, I think. Um, because just the combination of cards that I had, uh, I don't think it worked out. Um, yeah, he is me thinking about all the bone and what he could do. And he plays bounty to get more stuff that was probably annoying to see. Ooh, mm -hmm. and a character uh, that can bring stuff yeah. in. Although now that Boros is there, he kind of protects you from House Florent Knight because mm -hmm. he is uh, getting discarded. Unless uh, he has. Uh, what's the guy? Bryce Karen. Yeah. But he actually only has one copy uh, in the deck, so. It's... He keeps the one gold for that, keeps, so he can't use the King's Road. Yeah, that was a bit frustrating, but I actually. I think I had Gormund here and. You want to have permanent on the board as soon as possible, in my experience. Uh, so I think I went for that, and I actually also found um, you'll see in a minute. If I decide what to play, um, I also drew Jingle Bell, which is uh, also a one-off character. It's a fool as well, and I had another Unbridled Generosity that I could play on him and Tormund, but. Um, so yeah, the remaining two cards in my hand are now Azora High and Unbridled Generosity. And there is to claim Intrigue here, yeah. so I guess you're taking Insight again. I'm taking Insight and then I was thinking if I should... Yeah, so <laughs> we'll see in a minute, let's not... Just looking at this guy, <laughs> he could do something really annoying. So there's no triggers from hand apart from how slow the Knight can trigger. But then he would need to bring in Bryce Cannon first so that Boros gets out of range or remove Boros in some other way. With Clever Paint you could get rid of Boros and Mandon more, I guess. Although you'd attack with Mandon, with both of them probably before mm -hmm. you do that. But he has three cards in one shell, so it's not like he can just have anything that he wants at this point. Could have a Hedge Knight or something, but it's not really usable here. No one can do two challenges, but uh, Insight actually is messy inside because Patchface and Shagwell get it as well, so that's yeah. really nice. You could play Unbridled and then I think Jingle Bell would get it as well, but uh, he, he might be getting killed before that. Uh, what's the military situation here? So he definitely has more than me. 16. So you have 14 if he yeah. attacked with everything. But I also... I was pretty okay. I had Jingle Bell and... Um, Shag will do to this card. If I need it, and then the Jingle Bell can find another Shag will do immediately. I think he actually decides to go for a weak military challenge here. Yeah, and this one wasn't really not worth li living, right? Yeah, so I easy mean, to defend it. Uh, there is easy to defend it, although there is an argument to be made that he gets stealed with the next renown. So one of my would also get stabbed, but yeah, I don't think it is. Well, your guy gets it as well, right? If you defend with your former champion. Yeah. Alright, so. Think, I think that's what I do. I think. Just the calculation has to be here not to lose if you if you decide to defend, right? So you have to think of, uh, okay, Bryce Caron, I guess, is plus one for this challenge. Nothing else that can just directly increase strength. Although there is still some kind of the arm that helps you into a removal card. But this should be plenty. 
Deja hacer. Yeah, and I tried to keep the power icons because um, in testing this deck was using a little bit um, weak on power icons. So. You mean the Terra line deck? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Brotherhood is also not that str strong on power icons. As, at least not as usual Valachian decks are. It has pretty even spread of fighting. Yeah, and uh, there were some games where basically your board did start to get destroyed, but you won anyway just, just by pushing through the power challenges, going mm -hmm. fast, that couldn't be defended. That does happen sometimes. I wanted that to happen in my uh, Assault game, which was completely different, but basically it was the same thing, trying to explore, exploit the power challenge weakness on the other so, side. So, I was I maybe should have use the, the power icon to defend um, because Shagwell has some strength for the, the intrigue and I could have defended the intrigue then but yeah I, I was thinking so I had Shagwell dupe, Varamir six skins now and um, unexpected um, and rather generosity and Azura High, and I didn't want Azura High to get this card, so I was, okay, I will not play Umbrella Generosity and hope I don't lose Azura High, but then I lost both, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at Osmond there just to see if he could somehow still get a win by five. He could, in theory, if he had the perfect cards, he could play. Uh, Bryce Karen from hand and that would give him one goal yeah. to play pinch as well. But that's but, a crazy set of cards. Really. I mean, I could defend either way, right? So I think here I need to defend power because... Yeah, I mean, in, on the play. Intrigue challenge that could have happened, right? Just by Osmond bringing Bryce Karen and then he gets one high power trigger and brings in pinch. And, yeah. yeah, but he didn't... Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, he spends his tricks, though, if he does that for a questionable benefit. And this is still to claim, so if you if you can defend it, it would be nice to do so. And you do. So basically he's hold around fizzles here. And now it's becoming quite predictable. You are on nine that he simply has to think about the Harris next. Yeah, and no, I still had this um acolyte to do another part so I was thinking maybe he has high tower knight, but then that would be a bit um rules for him to hire this right yeah either he uses stuff to defend this it's more um tricks used or he just leaves it in your own 11. okay maybe you lose some for the harris that's not really you were looking here right at um at losing torment because everyone else adds up to 10 so mm -hmm. if you keep, keep everyone Okay, Torment is your best character, but if you can <laughs> yeah. keep everyone else, that's... Uh... The fool started to go so good in this matchup, I... think I kind of had to keep them with so much power on them. Because you can see, yeah, yeah, there's only five on faction cards, so more than half is on the character. Well, 11-2, but... Uh... You can already see a spoiler. This video is much longer than uh, than mm -hmm. that, so game is still very much alive. Yeah, so he has still some options here before he passes. Not sure what exactly, because he he was first player, so he's done the challenges. Maybe he has a way to trigger. High tower, but no reason not to just do that in dominance if he does. Clever paint doesn't give him gold. Hmm. Didn't push through a, a two claim military and, or a two claim power, but he did the intrigue one so. You don't have hollow heal, but you had some insight. Mm -hmm. And now if he does play the Harris, 
What's the plan for your plot? So I do play point in favor and here there's really no penalty for it because if he doesn't play the high race I have an easy character to um, sacrifice and I didn't have the best econ so that worked out pretty well anyway. So he plays Clever Paint and we know that now he has Boros and Men and that's a lot of tempo he can bring out of Shadows mm -hmm. and he can keep everyone now for the Harris so it's quite obvious what's going to happen. You don't have a good force march, sometimes you can play that into the Harris. Well, you could need three, I guess, but yeah, he brings other stuff out of shadows and your board is net and you are on 11, so I think uh, the thinking here is already, can we win this quite quickly? There's the renown on three characters. And yeah, so if Tormund isn't going to be kept, he can just be sacrificed. And now that's a lot of uh, gold. And now this is open deck list, so you know that uh, you yourself have four plots. So you're, you're not going to be forced to reveal your to Harris, and mm -hmm. he has nothing else left. So whatever you play from this moment onwards is, is there to stay, so you can just go but crazy with the board if you he like. He does have um, Sir Robert's run still, and of course there's still. Um, uh, so yeah, of course, but there's no but penalty yeah. for overextending, right? Yeah. Sure. If you have Melisandre, you just play her. If you have Tormund, you play him. Unless you, you, you think a, you have to play your own the Harris at some point. I had a few I had a few good options, I think, but the Econ was still not brilliant, right? And now and you can use the King's Road here, because there's no gold for the Red Keep. And actually, I was thinking... Um, uh, I had bottom new six skins from like round two and I kept thinking he's not worth playing just because Red Keep will cancel him every time and then he's a bit of a bad character character to have on the board because like three strength and one icon and I think this guy ended up being way better. Yeah, increases everyone's strength now. House Lord and Knight is so difficult at the moment it's just going to hit Jingle Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you use the King's Road, so more stuff to come. I do remember what comes <laughs> into play here. Choice was between Varamir and uh, the Lord Guy. What's it called? Toros, right? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, um, the. Um, the roller guy, yeah, he has uh, printed renown and Varamir doesn't have anything printed. He just has the ability to can cancel every time, but to be fair, I don't think in retrospect he could have cancelled it because um, he has a red keep, yeah. Well, Hollow Hill, if the game goes past this point, this round, that's going to be a, a fine investment. And what are we doing with the other? Yeah, goals? this is. I was thinking, should I play this one or. Um, when I'm going to see okay, let's marshal this one, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a second up for uh, Shagwa, so you're clearly not going to play around the Harris or. If you do, you're keeping him anyway, so you need him protected because he's gaining power. And now I think. I was thinking that now, because I played this Ghost of High Heart, actually my former champion lost that. So, um, uh, yeah. In calculations, I was thinking if I can win military with all four of those guys, they all have renown and it would basically just be out of win. So I wanted them to have that because they're not the strongest guys. <laughs> Yeah, you could have played uh, both of them, right? Uh, Varamir and Taurus yeah, instead Varamir of and Taurus Hollow and Hill. Then I wouldn't have Hollow Hill, but I was thinking Hollow Hill, if it doesn't end, it's going to be a fine investment. And so uh, I did use the agenda to give instead. I could do like Intimidate or something like that. Yeah, so the calculation now is you start past all of this so they can win the military challenge because mm -hmm. now former champion has started and so the Shagwell and Patch face. Both have started, right? And they have renowned the two fools. Former champion has renowned, Taurus has renowned. Mm -hmm. So that's just 15 if they all go into a challenge and win it. 
And at the moment, it looks so difficult for Robert to defend that because, okay, all three of his guys are there instead. He would need what's that strength? Uh, 17. He would need 18 just to win on defense with three gold. He needs to bring out 18 strength worth of stuff, which seems yeah, so but likely. That was in the back of my head, I was thinking there's gonna be Robert Strong for sure, right? And yeah, but he also he needs to. Let's not spoil anything, but there's definitely. He needs to get gold <laughs> before he does that as well. Mm. So we know there's Boros and we know there's Mandon. None of them trigger High Tower to get additional gold. Yeah. And there's gold on Osmond, so but three cards in hand. He can only bring from hand, as I've discovered. I tried many times to bring that in front of the disc pile, and it wouldn't let me for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I mm. usually did the other event um, incorrectly. But in variety, I tried to bring them. In. Yeah, I did that as well. <laughs> to bring them from hand. So the thing is now, he loses the game if he doesn't stop this. Either he needs to remove power, which he could if he kills one of the guys that have renown, uh, if that have power on them, so Patchface or uh, former champion, or he needs to win on defense. That's his only yeah, or uh, both. choice. <laughs> or both, yeah. I think if he does uh, win on defense, he will have killed something in the process, probably. Yeah. Right? I couldn't really trigger the ghost of high heart here because um, until red keep is standing, it just put into a suit anyway. Yeah, well, it does spend one gold for him. I don't know if that makes any difference. Yeah, maybe. I think it works out in the long run. So he needs to. Well, it's not. Um, he needs to think, not so much calculate, because Boros is not um, guaranteed. So he searches, and then if he finds, he finds, and if he doesn't, he doesn't. So yeah, you he... have to think a lot of things through. He ends up with, I think, something like two Boros triggers or something. Pretty interesting round, I was uh, so nervous here. <laughs> yeah, that's. it reminded me of my own game in round one against uh, Marcel when I was waiting in during the challenge where I could uh, get the 15 and I just wanted him not to have an answer. And this was the same kind of drama. I don't think Robert had it here, uh, but he had the, the bonus triggers. He had a yeah. theoretical way to defend if things worked out for him. So Boros comes from hand with Osmond to search. And now what does he find is the question, because it's blind. He didn't set up anything on top. If he finds Robert Strong, that's his strongest one to actually defend. It's 8, but then it doesn't trigger. So he uses this one and actually scouts his own Boros? And we know that there is another one in Shadows, right? Yes, and uh, gives him some additional strength and another trigger to find another one. Yeah, and another card. Even if uh, he could discard one of your cards here, unless it, well, Jingle Bell, if, uh, if he could discard something uh, mm. more important, he might have uh, discarded Boros anyway, because that he was trying to find defenders, I think. Needed another trigger. And now these have four, so they're still nowhere near. And if he finds Robert Strong, it's still only 12. Yes, they're 17. So now yeah, really stressful. <laughs> I think that's the last the last uh, search he does. So now he can actually start calculating how the rest of the 
the phase will play out depending on what he finds. If he doesn't find removal or anything that wins on defense, it's over anyway. So he brings in the Knight of Flowers, which is plus 5. Still a bit away. So he's 9 currently and we're attacking with 17. He would need another 9. Robert Strong is 8. Although if he comes in and kills something, of course, then he can win. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, he has 3 gold. And he cannot gain anymore unless he has the Iron Bank and have its Dune, our favorite card in this tournament. <laughs> Which Marcel drew with his Dorn triggers against me. This would be one of those that's difficult to forget. You remember it like I do the nightmares that Connor played against me in last year's Sight Region tournament. Yeah, <laughs> this is fair enough. So there's no, uh, the game is not timed and he has to think because it's, um, if he doesn't find the solution, it's over. So this is his last uh, chance. No nightmares or anything like that. Uh, it's, uh, deck has a lot of tricks, a lot of removal, but in, in other ways, it doesn't have solutions like, uh, for instance, Nico's deck that is going to be played in uh, the third game this uh, round. Just has some random nightmares that you can always play. I think the, the Reigns one does as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Reigns is pretty popular for nightmares. Can be. Yeah, I can't have everything in your deck. Can he play Bounty? He can play this one, okay. And Osmond. Now, that's 7 gold, even if you now use uh, Ghost, it leaves him 6 if he really wants to cancel it. Now it's kind of too late, he, he got the Robert Strong gold, and is he coming? Yeah, I was thinking... Uh, we know the other two cards, right? No, we don't. Uh, no, we, we know Mandon, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah I was, uh, forgot to ask if he drew that... Um, I don't think we have it due with the high tower trigger or no. <laughs> but yeah, luckily for me, okay, this challenge is us now, but at least we're still the source of renown from his former champion. So that's something to go on. Yeah, you are on 13, so he still needs to use three defenders to win on defense. Now, you don't win if, he, if you um, mm -hmm. win the challenge, so it's not so urgent for him to defend, but yeah. Better defend, I think, because you still get really close to victory. And spend, okay, Knight of Flowers might stand, that's the thing. But, uh, well, okay, uh, two military icons now standing there that were stealth that they're not a factor anymore in this challenge space, and you still have your power and intrigue icons, which you may as well use because you are on nine, especially the power has to stand Knight of Flowers. So Mandon is too expensive, what's the other card? It's a mystery card. Mm -hmm. I think I do remember actually what it is. Yes. <laughs> it's to come out though to stand Knight of Flowers if he wants to win on defense. But if he does then he really is out of power icons. Can't attack back. It's just uh, what works out better is the question. He leaves it unopposed, which gives you three power that goes on faction card. It's the safest place. And he spent a lot of stuff to survive here. Actually, not just survive now, it actually has a pretty good round here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what is staying around is the question. Knight of Flowers was brought in by Boros, so he's going and, and the the Houseblood Knight was brought in by Osmond, yeah. who is now in hand. No, no, it was actually also brought in by Boros. Boros uh, was brought in yeah, by Yeah, okay. Osmond. Okay, so Boros is now, the original Boros is gone, so he's, this one is staying. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, so I was thinking better to defend in trick here because, you know, had Varomir 16 still then. <laughs> yeah, he goes with both of former champions here even though I couldn't defend the one. So he gets two renown, but I also get styled from that. Yeah, taking Shag will do. No, nothing uh, for Jingle Man to find at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I still was hoping to defend the entry. And Robert Strong is now in in play. Can be brought back to Shadows, but okay. He spent a lot of stuff really. Can't just have another clever find randomly. Now, what does he do with. Um, Knight of Flowers, can he stand him? Will now make a second. Ping mm -hmm. is down, so he can pinch. Uh, so yeah, he did bring a pinch, and I was thinking probably uh, Patch Face would be the best to lose the power here as well, but he goes for Ghost to High Heart, I think, um, so he could win Intrigue as well then. And yeah, I don't know, in the long run, that worked out. As good for him as... And here, uh, you you trigger, of course, because he's going. Yeah, uh, he cancels. And he cancels yeah. with the red, red keep, which is interesting. So he, we know he, have, he has Osmond. He, he didn't want to lose his hand. And that actually uh, costs him, I think, uh, in dominance, because you, you now yeah. get the Hollow Hill, which is a top 10 search. I will now... Um... Maybe he had Osmond and two useless cards, and yeah. Didn't really want to lose him. And you win dominance as well because that uh, knight of um, Houseborn knight actually is going. Oh, yeah, he's and he anyway. okay. tried to do it as well anyway, and I was fairly happy about it, I think. Um, I have follow here, and then I have. Um, Another character in hand, uh, regardless of what he discards. Yeah, so got up to 9 there for a second, but it is 11 7 mm -hmm. after he loses his Knight of Flowers. And yeah. um, now, what are, what are you saying here? So, um, not sure. I think this is the one that I take Melisandre, right? Pretty sure you took Angu in the. Oh, oh, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe that's the thing. I was. I had to choose between Melisandre, I think another Tormund, and Angui, and I just went for Angui because it basically counts as two characters, and I couldn't play two five faster in the next round, and I had um, just hoping I can get uh, two characters on board instead of just the one five first one. Yeah, so. Mm. The plots, you still have the Harris, which is not that great. He gets he, rid of um, yeah, he, this guy. Robert Strong, you don't want him off the board, you want him to stay. Yeah. Uh, and he has forced March and four characters, which is a problem because you can you have to need all of yours. And that's the one plot that wins him initiative. Yeah, I was thinking he would go for that one. All the everything you play except your own forced march loses initiative here against his forced march. Yeah. So you can't play the Battle of the Camps, that uh, is pretty decent. Yeah, I was thinking um, I couldn't really use forced march, I didn't want to do anything that much, but yeah. Um, just to go first, threat, right? and you still have your renowned yeah. threat. He still has, has to deal with it. And actually, now there's stuff by default as well, so. Yeah, yes. although the former champions now themselves cannot be started. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> this robot strong is the biggest, um, the biggest strength. So, uh, more than 40 minutes gone, but it's only <laughs> going to be round 4 here. Yeah. Yeah, lots of uh, decision points here. It was not a straightforward game at all, especially for him because he he had tried so hard to survive here. He's on seven, so he's not doing badly, and he has turn, remember? So mm -hmm. 
if he gets reasonably close, okay, he doesn't have 10 knights, but if he gets reasonably close, he can win with Dagny. Yeah. So when time expires, uh, the game, you're still fine for for a while, but then it times out. But yeah, it's this is going to be either the the last round or the penultimate one. It's going to try Tarni. Anyway, at some point, I was thinking, is he going to try it here? It doesn't beat the initiative of your remaining plots, so he would not actually be able to go fast with it. Yeah. Something like 20 minutes or 15 maybe after uh, time expires, the game times out. Yeah, it would be shame if it timed out. It was nice. Nice game. So what plot did you choose? Fourth match? I, I did go for fourth match just to be first. For sure, because I think... I'm not sure how much I can do going second, right? Right, you go first and you decide to trigger his first, right? It doesn't matter here, so... It doesn't matter, yeah, I wouldn't have matters anything. It here, never right? matters if, if two people reveal first match, uh, the order never matters, I think. But it is a bit confusing on the other turn, it asks you to use first match and then use it again. So, giving him the choice how many he wants to need now, he doesn't have Econ, that's the problem. He's going to have 5 gold, and sure, he can need 3 to need 3 of yours. Then you're left with Ecolite and Jingle Bell, and he has one of the, presumably one of the former champions. But he goes for the minimum here. I was quite happy about it, I think. Just ended up moving towards. So that also means that he's not going to use Clever Paint or anything like that. His characters. Uh, yeah, I was hoping so. I was scared that there might be another um, Robert Strong trigger. Yeah, because that does work actually now. He could uh, kneel your characters yeah. and then... Uh... I'm thinking that was the idea for this deck. Because that works out quite nicely, right? You kneel all the military icons and uh, Sir Robert Strong has yeah, the can choice. Kill Patchface, can kill Shagwan and then you try yeah. to pinch or pinch first, kill later. Uh, the problem is though he is in play, and if yeah. you play the arm bank with have it's you, he, yeah, you cannot he, play him that round, and so this is only clever feint really. I assume that's what he was thinking about in the previous round because he had to spend him, so I didn't win. Probably wanted to spend him in this round, mm -hmm. and he got back the back and brother, which was pretty good honestly. Just one. But so. I honestly I didn't think I would use the cancer because he had red pit. So I was just thinking I will just have him so there's more ways to spread um, to spread the keywords and I was thinking maybe I want to have actually intimidate on the intrigue icons because um, if I give it for angry then I only get military and power intimidate and it was actually surprisingly intrigue was the weakest um, which is usually not the case. But yeah, if those former champions didn't have two power on them, they couldn't win last yeah. round, then he is completely out of power icons and really exposed. Oh, but you see another one here, and there's still high tower knights that I don't think, think there's any of them played this game. No, not yet. Yeah, so if he wants a trigger. He has to keep Red Keep, because uh, Bag and Brother cancels everything, and uh, the card in Shadows is, is meant on Moore, and he's just passed here, so... No Osmond, that was in hand. So yeah, I was thinking I could actually now use Bag and Brother, but then I can't take Intimidate on him. So that was... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was the correct call here. But yeah, I did but decide to go for Intimidate and Begging Brother, actually. Look at the Econ, right? So, if he, he played Osmond, he's 4, he had 5 gold to work with, and if you bestow him, that's 5, so he spent everything, and then you can't use him because Begging Brother cancels yeah. him. That's, um, yeah, no Red and Strains, no Arbor, didn't get a third bounty, okay, he got 2, which is... You can expect 2, but yeah, if he just had the Arbor here, uh, he would have been able to do so much more, I think. 
And now what uh, does he do here on defense? So the what's the renowned situation? So uh, Patchface and Shagler are getting it. Yeah, and no renown for... Um... Could have chosen renown here for Ango, I guess. So you're not going to just win on one challenge here. Yeah, but also now Shagler and Patchface will still have spelled. And Intimidate now. And Intimidate the now have Bagan Brother, I think. Yeah, so if he doesn't properly deal with your entry challenge, then you can just uh, start to mill the power icons. Then, okay, maybe it's not getting you to, to 15, but he's wasted around and mm -hmm. his turn is not winning initiative next round, right? So even if he has knights to get to 15, he's going to be second player, whatever, because you have uh, Palace uh, to Harris and uh, Battle of the Camps, and you just play Battle of the Camps. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. And his remaining plots, by the way, uh, apart from Tony, he has close call. And the last one is political, political disaster. disaster. No, I don't think that I... Is there close call? Yes, I think so. No, I don't think there's close call. There's Tony? Oops. <laughs> I need to look at it now. No, I've given up. Can't check. <laughs> mm -hmm. Military first. You have a non miller for the military challenge, so that's the one that's defended the most as well. Although stealth. So Angui, Patchface and Shagwell could attack with 10 and stealth past uh, everyone except Portland Champions with Intimidate as well, so that was one op option for you here. Ah, okay, you're right, it's not close call, it's Counting Coppers. Yeah, it, he had the crap icon here, could never play Counting Coppers really. Although maybe gets a uh, Iron Man will have its duo, so that's plus five for just taking Robert off, so maybe. Plus six. Plus six even this. Mm -hmm. Not thinking here for a long time. Whether this is the way to go. He is weak on the intrigue icon, so you could potentially start with that. But starting with military. Now he can defend with nine. Yeah. Which you were happy with, I guess. He spends his uh, he spends tricks. His thing, then he has no icon. I mean, um, no icons left. Then the only thing that could come in is another. Uh, well, Mandan in shadows, and then also the. Uh, the high tower knight. The high tower knight, yes. And if he does that, it's clear that he himself cannot threaten really here to win. His former champions would get uh, down to two strength, man. One more and they'd get intimidated. Mm -hmm. Which uh, would help you going first. Yeah. But of course, now I think um, there's some thing said about this. Uh, if he kills his former champion for fame now, uh, I would actually lose my renown. Yeah, it doesn't know your As last the, card, so it could be a bridal yeah. generosity, I guess, yeah. really. And he was thinking here about that. Now, he, okay, it's not a time game, so he can come back, but it would cost him two power as well. Mm -hmm. To do that, uh, you would still win. And what are the keywords? Intimidate, basically, right? Yeah, no, you said no either. No, just intimidate. That's pretty decent still though, and he left it unopposed, which means you get to 12 either way. You do lose so the stealth as well. So I get to 12, well. intimidate one, but yeah, the stealth goes away as well. So maybe that's the thing to do here. It's hurting him, it's been hurting him most of the, well, the last two rounds anyway. 
I was hoping here that he maybe forgets about all the keywords, doesn't think that Shag will also just randomly has intimidate now because Bagging Brother has it. Because Bagging Brother's gold, you don't associate with uh, yeah. gaining keywords. It's gold there to be spent. Yeah, and I ended up going for power and military, so I might as well have taken um, Intimidate and Angry, and then I could spend this gold here now in a minute. I think he might have defended differently, though. Mm, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, now that he didn't take form champion for claim, Means that he is giving you stat as well. And yeah, I was thinking maybe he face. has, um, maybe he has the iron bank to have its due, but I think it would now it would be time to use it. No intrigue icons either, so you can just do one and force him to defend. But yeah, I we knew that there is this guy in shadows. Yeah. Spends the gold though. This doesn't lose the game, gets you to 14 because Jingle Bell doesn't have renown at the moment. Although he'd win he'd have to win power on defense. Attack back wind dominance. Maybe I could have gone with Bagging Brother, right? But then I had one less power item. And I don't know if it would matter, but I was thinking he could have like um, two high tower knights in hand or something like that. Yeah. One. Which actually is okay for Turney then, but uh, uh, like we said, he goes second on Turney and you have stats, so. Patchers does have stat and team that entry now. That's everything that Shagwell has. Shagwell has everything that everyone with gold has, <laughs> which is uh, all the keywords from Banging Brother and Former Champion. Right, so Jingle Bell is the weakest character, but he is doing a no, challenge. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, I was choosing between killing Taurus or getting another dupe from um, Shagwell, but I was thinking, is there a way to play Clever Faint and then get some gold back to also get, again have, have um, Sir Robert trigger? But I don't think there was, but I still did. I yeah. still go for. Would you consider uh, cancelling this because Red Keep now is uh, cannot um, yeah, cancel Bagging Brother? It. I regretted committing <laughs> for uh, Intimidate on Bagging Brother, but you know, so it is. I didn't want to do the Intimidate just because. Well, Taurus is there net, so if you think you can just win on the Power Challenge with Renown, that is game over, so. You can either do him or Shagwell, although Shagwell you don't want to risk, like I said. I don't think there's a theoretical way for him to recycle uh, Robert Strong at this point without uh, needing his faction card twice, so... And uh, Houseborn that is nowhere near Shagwell. Mm -hmm. You can pinch him, but uh, he'll lose the game by then. He will actually spend all the cards in Shadows, can't even pinch him. No, I think it's game over and he knows it. Yeah, I think the only thing that if he had two high tower knights, I think it would win. I mean, win, defend. Because it would be win. It would be 11 to 11, right? Yeah, I think I. I think I was counting something like that. Um, so I stealth one of the three strength guys, then if two high tower knights come in, that's 11. 
Oh no, yeah, it took him in the right ways. Yeah, you lose the challenge. I don't remember that there was some character that spent. You lose the challenge, but he spends his, again, he spends most of his tricks just to achieve that. Yeah, but if it's one, it's okay. So I was thinking now, he can't do the, uh, he could do the Iron Man will have it to do and bring in one former champion uh, and bring in one. Near him to bring High Tower Knight in and then get um Yeah, at the moment he committed to defense here. And I lose renown, but when he defended it's yeah. okay. If he takes him to hand, I get unopposed. If he doesn't, I get renown. So I think this was that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have um, saved so him some power. It would I think it would take to another round if you killed him. Mm -hmm. Well, so there we are. <laughs> <laughs> it nice was a one. very stressful game. Uh, just... Yeah, I'm sure looking at it here for anyone that wasn't uh, feeling that uh, kind of tension, it, it looked pretty comfortable. Like you were always single, probably always had all the answers. He had that one crazy round to defend the 17 military yeah, and, from uh, no board. Defend the military, but also <laughs> the pinch, then I did not quite. Was wasn't quite prepared for it because it not only was it pinch but then the amount of power spent and could have gone badly. But I'm happy that this deck did work out. It was a bit of a risk taking for this uh, tournament, I think. Yeah. It's not I, that I disagree. I think, I think it's very strong and it's a it's a constructive deck that uh, uh, plays aggressively, not in terms of removal, but just in terms of, of getting uh, results quickly and you need to deal with it in the early rounds. Yeah, we decided not to take um, yeah, Kindly Man, I don't know if that was the correct choice here. He only interacts with uh, Torment pretty much and I guess Lady Storm has, but yeah. I went for a, a single copy of Delena, just in case there's no instant happening. <laughs> Yeah, there was one in this game, but not that much. Okay, so there we are. That's um, the first game in our um, round two match against uh, the High Gardeners. And we bring you the other two games as well. Let's see how it goes. Good start. It's um, It was uh, probably the one I was worried about the most, so optimistic for the other two. So thank you everyone for being with us on this one and we'll see you next time.